what's the significance of this uh, directly uh, um, evolution. evolution of enzymes? What do you mean evolution? So evolution, of course, we are, normally we understand natural evolution of, of organisms oh, yeah. and, and, and plants and every, every living organism. Mm -hmm. um, so what these laureates have done is they have mimicked natural evolution in the test tube. So they can, instead of waiting for millions or billions of years for enzymes to evolve within our bodies or within organisms, one can now evolve enzymes in the test tube in a, in a matter of weeks. Uh, so they have sped up the process of evolution many, many, you know, a lot of time. They have sped up the process of evolution many uh, meaning that we can now create or develop new enzymes for human use in a very short time. Uh, enzymes that can be used in industry, for instance. Uh, to, to take a very mundane example, enzymes in our washing powder, uh, you know, that we use for laundry, uh, have been perfected or evolved by uh, direct evolution such that they can work properly at the high temperatures we use in our washing machines. And so That's a very mundane. So this enzyme can be produced according to our human will. Yes. So we can we can say I want an enzyme that can carry out this particular reaction at, at high temperature or in 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 an environment that uh, that normal enzymes don't work in, and we can use these methods to. To obtain enzymes of this kind uh, in and a very quick process. Okay. And the other two? And the other two have, evolved, have developed something called phage display, which is also a way to harness the power of evolution in the lab. Um, but it's, more, it's better applied to the development of antibodies, of new antibodies. And as you may know, uh, antibodies have, in the past 10 years, have become very important therapeutics. So there are now antibodies that can help you fight cancer, for instance, or rheumatism, or a range of other diseases uh, that were not possible to treat before, at least not effectively. But thanks to new antibodies that have in part been developed using the page display technique, uh, medicine now has completely new kind of weapon to, to fight this. I remember this phage. We, we have awarded this before, right? Um, Something related to... We, the phage itself has not been awarded before. Phage is, is uh, kind of a virus, but instead of infecting us, it infects bacteria. So, so phages are viruses that infect bacteria. And, and these people have come up with a very clever way of using phage uh, and the rapid replication of phage particles to, uh, to evolve new antibodies and, and, and other kinds of proteins. So we can use this phage to bite other bad uh, negative bacteria? Yes, we use the phage to obtain the antibodies that bind to, say, infecting agents or that can trigger the destruction of cancer cells in our body, for instance. So that means if you have more of these kind of antibodies, then uh, cancer treatment is very hopeful now. Yeah, so there are certain types of cancer for which there are now available antibodies that, that are quite effective in treating those particular types of cancer. And I think in the, in the pharmaceutical industry, they're trying to come up with new antibodies against other types of cancer, but also other types of disease. A uh, final question is, uh, you know, if you say for industry use, what, what kind of area can be used in industry? So, uh, one very mundane uh, example is uh, enzymes in laundry detergents that we use in our, in our washing machines. They have been perfected by, by, uh, by in this way. Uh, there are also examples of uh, where one used these perfected enzymes to synthesize new drug molecules, for instance, in organic synthesis. Uh, uh, and
and, and uh, other applications are in making biofuels. Uh, so one that tries to make enzymes that can convert simple sugars, for instance, in, effectively into biofuels. So there are wide, quite a wide range of industrial, possible industrial applications of, of, of enzyme evolution. Maybe I also like to ask a final question. You know, in terms of uh, this uh, research area, you know, recently we have uh, the Nobel winners mostly from the Western world. Uh, can you comment a little bit, you know, in your opinion, uh, what is uh, China's uh, development in research area? Or your impression? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so clearly China is developing very rapidly in the science area. Uh, and you can see this in the main scientific journal, journals, for instance, where an increasing number of papers, publications come from China, even high-profile publications. Uh, what one can say when, if you take this in the context of the Nobel Prize, for instance, is that the kind of discoveries that normally are rewarded now were made usually 20 years ago, 25 years ago. That's true for this year's Nobel laureates, for instance. So in a way, uh, the Nobel Prize reflects uh, science, the active science of, say, 20 years ago, because it takes that long for a discovery for us in the Nobel Committee to evaluate whether a particular discovery really had that great impact that we're looking for. Uh, so there's kind of a lag phase, but of course China and other Asian countries are developing very rapidly in, uh, in science. So presumably in another 20 years is when we will start to see this, this being reflected somehow. Thank you very much.